to June. And our new series, In the Spirit of Creativity, our book of the month, and indeed even our book of the month for July too, because it's a lot of pages in little type, is A New Design for Living by Ernest Holmes and Willis Kinnear. And I am reading from page nine in the first chapter. Water, crystallized as snowflake or ice, or any crystal in nature, provides the physicist with nothing but atoms from which it was built. But when certain atoms are brought together in a regularly, regular and orderly manner, a crystal with a definite geometrical form must result. We know that a fertile chicken egg will produce a baby chick. We know that two tiny cells comprised of atoms which are joined together within it will grow into thousands of cells, and in the process of growing, some will become bone, others flesh, others feathers. What is that something back of both the crystal and the chick that takes the atoms and arranges them, joins them together, adding more and more, and finally assembles them into the end result? Does that something reside within the atom itself? In this concretion of pure energy comprised of a nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons, it is here that all the intelligence, purpose, and essence of form that are found in the physical world reside. Hmm. It does not seem possible or logical that it would all reside here in the atom. Even if the atom does contain within itself the source and the pattern of all physical things, how did such power get into the atom? Rather, it would appear the physical world did not develop of its own accord or out of the action of electrical charges, but instead there is an organizing factor that uses the atom to construct things. An organizing factor that uses the atom to construct things. I'll read through our affirmation once and then I'll invite you to join me. I abandon myself to the genius of the universe, allowing the infinite mind to inspire me with creative ideas and the power to bring those ideas into form. Made in the image and likeness of, oh, sorry. <laughs> I started preaching there for a second, sorry. <laughs> Made in the image of the infinite creator, I create a beautiful life that I love to live, and so it is. Please stand and join me with conviction. I abandon myself to the genius of the universe, allowing the infinite mind to inspire me with creative ideas and the power to bring those ideas into form. Made in the image of the infinite creator, I create a beautiful life that I love to live. And so it is. Here's what I love about this song. It's a total reframe, isn't it? How many of you have ever felt lost? When you're lost, what are you affirming? I'm lost. I can't find my way, this is impossible. But what if you weren't lost? What if you were just, eh, I'm exploring. I'm sorting through. I'm on a creative adventure and I get to create the adventure however I want. And do you kind of get a sense how I'm lost? It's painful, might create one adventure. And I'm exploring, and this is quite an emotional experience for me, might create another adventure. Because you see, what we are always engaging in, I hate to tell you this, we are always engaging in the creative process. If you are in the Prosperity Plus class, you heard Reverend Mary say last week, we are always creating something. And we're either creating the life that we love to live by the power of our word and our consciousness, or she says, we're pulling the covers over our head and then we're creating that kind of life, right? 
How many of you have at times lived the covers over your head life? I know I have. Now, that certainly, you know, we don't want to dis or, or, or disrespect that because it's part of what got me to where I am today, right? See, I had to learn to stop pulling the covers over my head and step forth confidently into an awareness that I am the chief creator in my experience of life. I guess that's really the end of the message. (laughs) Let's go get some lunch. I mean, honest to be, you guys, if we could get that, if we could get that, there would be, there, uh, th- then all we would be about is just creating the lives that we love to live, yes? So why is that so difficult for us to understand? You know, one of the things that um, it says in this book is that we have to approach this study with a child's sense of discovery. I'm exploring. How do we tend to approach our evolution and growth? Oh my God, I'm so bad. I can't believe I didn't get that boat. Silly me. I hate myself. Can I? I can't believe I did that. Yes? Blame, shame, and guilt. Yes? Anybody ever do that? Am I the only one? But what if I approached life with a child's sense of discovery? You know, I have this little, like, two year old, not quite 18 month old nephew. And he's like in this, like everything is new. He got a chip. My, my little niece planted a picture of him on a, 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 a video of him on Facebook. He's got a chip and he's on the beach. And he is so overwhelmed by this chip that he's going this way and then he's going this way and he's so excited he got a chip. And I'm like, and his mom in the video, she said, well, it's covered with sand now. I mean, <laughs> you know, but you see, he got so much joy out of a little corn chip, you guys. Can we find joy in the glory of the morning? Can, can we find joy in the coming together in spiritual community? Can we find joy in life? Can we find joy in the beat of our hearts? Can we find joy in the next breath? If it's in a corn chip, it's in you. So we approach our discovery of how our lives got to be the way they are and how we can create them to be more of what we dream them to be with a sense of childlike discovery. And I invite you to take a look at your life. And not just at your life, but at your community and at the world. So I think we, it's time for us in New Thought to broaden the context a little bit. It's not all about you. <laughs> Sorry. It's about you. It's about your community. It's about the world that we have created. Take a nice long look and ask yourself, have I created a life that 100% works for me? Have we created a world that 100% works for everyone? It is in our power to do that. And what we have created already, we can recreate. I had a very ex- interesting experience with my dictionary this morning. I was kind of writing, oh, what we have created, we can recreate. And I went, recreate? Wait a minute, that's recreation. And I pulled out my dictionary and I looked up recreation. And do you know that recreation is an activity that we enjoy in our free time? And I just want to put out there, maybe recreation, recreation is an activity that we just enjoy all the time. It's fun to create a life that we love to live. It's fun to create a world that works for everyone. We are creating joy. We're creating aliveness. We are creating peace. We are creating all that is required for everyone to have every need fulfilled and beyond. And it's recreation. It's fun. It's not hard work. It's coming together 
as individuals who know who and whose they are, to work together to create something new. And so really what we're doing this morning is we are going all the way back to the basics. This is like New Thought 101, the creative process. How does it work? What is the creative process? The first thing to think about is what's behind the atom. What is the intelligence or the power that tells an atom how to organize itself? This power is what we often use the word God for. But you know, God is just a shorthand little word and in two weeks we're gonna talk in detail about, about exactly what is God and how does what we believe about God dictate our experience of God? So look forward to that. But in the meantime, just know that, that, that the word God is this little shorthand word that we use for the infinite substance, for the creative power that brings that substance into form and the form. In other words, God is all there is. You hear me say that all the time. It's the podium, it's the Marla, it's the rug, it's the floor on which I stand, it's you, it's the walls of the building, it's the trees and plants. That substance that we call God is the essence and the form and the shape of all things. And behind what we see here in the realm of form, there is an infinite substance that what we see in form came from. There is a source and a pattern, a substance that becomes the chair, a substance that becomes the podium, a substance that becomes me. And this substance is that which is eternal. The invisible, the unseen substance is the thing that's forever. What we see here is what's temporary. And what we see here will return to that substance, ultimately. But it's all one thing. You see, the substance is energy. This is form. The substance is energy. This is form. And Einstein told us energy and matter are what? The same thing. It's the same thing. The substance becomes form, and the form becomes substance, and it's all one thing that we call God. Now, in between the substance becoming the form, something has to say yes to the substance taking that particular form. Something has to say yes to the atoms organizing as the chick and the egg. Yes? Here's your little, this is your little um, midterm check. What is the thing that says yes? The law. And the law, it's capital L-A-W, and it's just a human word that we use to describe that which says yes to the substance taking a particular form. Hmm. The best way I can think of to describe the law is to talk about potential. Potential. What's in, what is the potential inside of an acorn? An oak tree. But you know, the potential inside of the acorn will never become oak tree unless something says yes to the potential. And the thing that says yes in the case of an or, or acorn is it goes into the soil and it gets a little bit of water and some nutrients and it bursts its shell and ah, Life, new life is formed. And the potential within the acorn but the potential is realized in form. Is not form, is it? There's not a whole oak tree in there, except there is. In energy. I was down at Ocean Shores this last week and um, and I, I grew up Part of my childhood was in the Hoquiam area, and I was reflecting a lot on my childhood. And I was remembering my dad's oak desk. It was an old teacher's desk, you know the kind I mean? 
And he taught at Hoquim High School. And when they closed the old high school and opened the new school, they got rid of all the old oak teacher desks. And my dad brought one of them home, and it was beautiful. It was so lovely, and it was huge. <laughs> it was so big. <laughs> I mean, they really thought teachers needed big desks in those days. And my dad would sit at this desk, and I would watch him work, and I would kind of, I like to sit at his desk and kind of play with his stuff. And for some reason, that desk meant something to me. Yes? And so, as I was thinking about the oak tree, you know, that desk was an oak tree once. What? The potential for the desk is in the oak tree. The potential for the desk is in the acorn. What? We're always creating. <laughs> We're always creating the potential for whatever you can imagine is in the unformed substance if you will but say yes. How do you say yes? Well, how many of you are familiar with the New Thought formula? Some of you have heard me say this before. What is the New Thought formula? A thought plus a feeling equals a... A result, a thought, the energy, the unformed substance, plus a mental conviction, I, I'm sorry, plus an emotional conviction equals the form. Mental content plus emotional content equals a result. Today's our 60th anniversary as a church. Now we count that anniversary, it's, it's, a, it's a little nebulous, like, because we sort of kind of had a study group that started uh, 60 and a half years ago, and then we didn't call our first minister until January, six months from now, but this is when we count from the time that we started actually meeting in a formal setting and having services, 60 years ago this month. Now, a group of people came together, and they began to develop a mental image of a gathering of people on a regular basis to learn to apply these new thought principles. 60, 63 years ago, somewhere around there. And they put emotional content into it. They saw this image with passion and with commitment. And they said, we are going to plant a church where people can come and enjoy fellowship and community and great music, where they can learn new thought principles and apply those in their lives. And they held fast to the vision. In fact, they were so committed to the vision that about a year later, 23 of these people contributed $2,500 a piece to buy this property that our building is on. Now, I want to tell you in 1961, how much was $2,500? $2,500 is a lot of money today. In that day, it was a lot of money. Those 23 families created a mental image, a vision of unity of Bellevue, put some emotional energy toward it, and committed their money to buy this property and build this building. A thought plus a feeling, moving your feet, equals a result. And here we are 60 years later and only one or two of those people are even still on this planet and I know who they are. God bless them. We are sitting here today because of their vision, because of the mental imagery they created, because of the commitment they made to put their emotional content into the image and say yes to it, to see the potential on a piece of dirt and say, here we can build a church. Here we can create something. And you know, every week we recreate that something. Every single week 
We look at the potential for music, for message, for people, for guests, for you. Every week, for 60 years, we have been recreating that vision and saying yes to it and putting our emotional and mental content into it. And look, I'm feeling blessed. How about you? <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> and let us not forget to honor those who, when this was dirt, when this was, when nothing was here, had the vision to see this building and had the vision to see you sitting here 60 years later. Oh, I'm lost. I can't possibly do anything. My poor life. I'll never get it together. Are you kidding me? Get some vision. Begin to create the mental image of what it is you wish to create. Get outside of yourself. Think bigger than just you. These people created something. Yes, it was for them, and there's nothing wrong with creating something for them, but it was for, for you, but it was bigger than them, wasn't it? Because they're not even here anymore, and we are still receiving the blessing. Have you created a life that 100% works for you? Have we created a world that 100% works for everyone? I don't think so. But can we do that? Can we design a new life? And maybe your life just needs a few little tweaks, you know? Maybe you're like 90% there, but I got to tweak this and I got to tweak that, get it just right. Can we design a new world? A world that works for everyone. How do we do that? We use spiritual law, the creative process. And you know, we talk a lot about spiritual laws, don't we? We talk about the law of mental equivalence and the law of attraction and blah, 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 all of those things. But you know, it all comes down to one thing. And the one thing it comes down to is consciousness is cause. Your consciousness is the cause of your experience of life. And I'm not saying your cause is the consciousness of every darn thing that happens. Do you hear me? Because I'm having my being in a world where there's a whole bunch of consciousnesses running around, right? <laughs> and that consciousness is creating this thing and that consciousness. And so we're all running all into each other, aren't we? And the mass consciousness is creating its own experience. And so how do we create a life that works for everyone? We work at the individual level of consciousness so that the group consciousness, the mass consciousness, can transform. <sighs> huh. Thoughts are things. One teacher I study, he says that thoughts are things and words are beings. Just ponder that a little bit. Not even totally sure what that means, but I think about it a lot. And I encourage you to think about it too. Thoughts are things and words are beings. And so here we are. We have an opportunity to consciously design a new life from a new state of consciousness, a new life for ourselves, a new life for those around us. And I want to plant one little seed. Remember, the potential is in the seed, isn't it? Here's one little seed for you to ponder on as we begin to practice the creative process in a conscious way. We talk a lot about co-creation, co-creating with God. I don't want to challenge that notion. I don't, you know, I mean, there's a lot I don't know. But I don't really believe that's how it works. Because if I am thinking that I'm co-creating with God, it's like, it's kind of like there's this God thing that's out there somewhere and we're on a project together. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm not sure that's really how it works. What feels more 
true to me, and you kind of sit with this and see how it feels to you, what feels more true to me is that it is all already created. I'm not really creating anything. I am creating a space where that which already is can make itself known. I am creating a space in consciousness, getting all my ideas of lack and limitation and not enough and I'm not good enough and I don't measure up. I'm allowing all of that to simply fall away into the nothingness from which it came and anchor in the awareness it is all. The banquet is laid before me. Do I want chicken or jello? Oh, jello, are you kidding me? Don't have jello. Go for the prime rib. Go for the Kahlua pie. Go for the good stuff. I said Kahlua. I was at a place yesterday that had Kahlua pie. <laughs> Go for the good stuff off the banquet that has already been created and is laid before us. Because ultimately, there really is nothing to be created, there is only a revelation to be known in consciousness. That is, seek first the kingdom, align with the consciousness of the infinite spirit, and allow all else to be added unto you. So let's take this on for a moment as we move into just a moment of visualization, beginning to create that mental image, beginning to create in consciousness, Beginning to allow in consciousness that which wants to be birthed in us. Beginning to allow that to make itself known. And so let's begin with the image. For your life, what is it? that wants to make itself known what joy, what happiness, what perfection. It might be in the area of career, relationship, money. Some place in your life there is something that is wanting to express more fully. And begin to open your heart and your mind to that idea. And as you open to that idea, you simply begin to build the image in consciousness. What does it look like for you to be in the midst of this good, this wholeness, this perfection, this thing that is meant to be expressed as you? What does it look like in your life? What are you doing? Who is with you? What is happening? And as you build this image, this picture in your mind, just notice any little places of resistance or I can't or I'm not good enough or no thank you. And allow those to follow. For you are created in the likeness of the infinite creator perfect, whole and complete. And that which belongs to the infinite belongs to you. In your heart and in your mind, you know this to be the spiritual truth. And that picture, that image begins to expand and grow in your mind. And begin to feel yourself moving into emotional agreement. With this picture, begin to feel the joy bubbling up from deep within you. Begin to feel the contentment and the happiness making itself known as you. Simply aligning with the feeling of it. Simply aligning with the joy of allowing the divine to unfold, to express as your life now. 
And as you build this picture and as you feel these feelings, just allow yourself to expand in your conscious awareness of the planet. And you begin to include Mother Earth and all of its creation in your vision. You open your heart and your mind more fully than you ever have before to all people, to all creatures, to all expressions of the divine. And you see and you know and you feel the highest good for everyone in this moment. And that image, that picture begins to unfold in your mind and you move into emotional agreement with it. You feel and you know, ah, this, this is life. This is love. This is power. This is grace. This is the beingness of the infinite expressing so perfectly and so divinely and you simply become the yes. You simply say yes. And as you say yes, the universal mind says yes, and all of the atoms begin to reform and reorganize to bring about the birth of something new. And you simply walk in happy anticipation of this good. And so knowing that as it is spoken, it is done, I simply release this word, and I close this message with a grateful grateful heart. And so it is. Amen.